Okay. So, hello everyone. This is Billy here to talk about the play framework. Uh, what I thought I would do is just very briefly talk about the hello world, talk about the documentation. Just um, if you are totally new to the play framework, give you an idea of what to expect, where to find things, how to sort of get started with it. Um, and then where to find information about how everything is sort of laid out. Because the play framework is very much a uh, convention over configuration sort of setup. You can, of course, configure everything, but if you follow the conventions and do things sort of the way that it's intended, then it can be a nice framework to use. It's very easy and lightweight and easy to just get started with an application. And so what I thought I would do first is I would point out the documentation. So if you go here to playframework.com, there is, you know, there's all of this stuff here. It talks about how nice everything is. If you click on documentation, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is you can click on what is play. It describes everything, but it takes you through at the bottom through these, you know, these different pages of getting started. It's uh, pretty useful if you if you've never installed Java before, if you never installed SVT, then then this would be useful to get you started. This uh, verifying and installing SVT is going to be the bare minimum that you want to do at least to sort of play along with me. If you're watching this video after the fact and you want to try to try it for yourself, you definitely want to go through all of this first set of SVT, um, and then you can start to learn from play examples. So this talks about downloading a Scala or a Java Hello World application. I'm actually going to show you a different way that you can sort of do the same thing. And it's going to be the example that I sort of work with. But it's going to be largely the same thing. Um, and then if you are in the, if you are in the uh, getting started, when you get to the anatomy of a play application, this is also pretty useful. This is part of what I'm going to walk through. Um, but there is a hello world tutorial documentation that actually walks you through kind of an architectural diagram there's an application overview and it walks you through actually running the application getting everything going which is what we're going to do now so ahead of time i've done this just so you don't have to you know wait around for me to run these commands but you can at least see what i've done so what i started with is i went into a certain you know my, my demo directory and i invoked SVT, I said SVT new play framework slash play scala C dot GA. What this does is it goes to github.com slash play framework slash play scala C G8 and it downloads this this git template and it runs SVT over it. And it uh, Gitterate is a kind of scala specific way to use code templates to generate code for you. And so this play scala seed what it will do for you is you it gives you an interactive shell where you type in, you know, the name of your application and the organization and the versions. Here I've created an application called Play Widgets, and the organization I chose was com.widgetco, and I just took the latest versions for Play and Scala. And when it was done, it created that code here in my demo uh, directory in a new directory called Play Widgets. And so you can see after I ran this, it, which it ran pretty quick, it created a new play widgets directory. And so if I CD into that directory and do SVT run, it will compile everything for the first time. Now here in IntelliJ, I have actually loaded this play widgets um, application. So you don't have to watch me fumble through IntelliJ. And so here you can kind of get a look at what actually is in this. Uh, at a bare minimum, you want to look at the SVT file. So this build SVT file has, you know, not very much in it. There's my organization and my application name here at the top. It's sort of, you know, in this application structure, it assumes that what you're doing is, you know, uh, creating a basic single, t you know, single tier application. Um, and so everything is all just in the in the local structure. You're not you're creating a multi-project in this sort of setup. You're not doing a, a big enterprise application yet. You're just starting from the ground up. And so here, all it's doing is you know we're saying okay at the root when we're aggregating something, I'm going to have a you know the project is in this 
this directory, the directory where the build SVT is. And for the project in this directory, we're going to enable the, pl the Play Scala plugin. The Play Scala plugin has a lot of uh, sort of default features built in for you. And so it has developer mode set up, um, it has, you know, twirl set up, it has all these things. So if, if you're using twirl, then Play Scala is a sensible default for you to use. If you wanted to not use twirl and use other things, you could sort of pick and choose which components you wanted. Um, but if you, if you click through on this Play Scala, you can see it, if you click through and keep going, you can see all of the things that are in this, this uh, in the Play Scala plugin. Going back to this build SVT, uh, it auto automatically includes juice. So that's the uh, juice is the the dependency injection that we use. It's a it's a Google's dependency injection library, and uh, the, we use it to sort of inject a lot of again default settings. You can use it to inject additional things. Like if you're wanting to connect to a database, you would probably use juice to you know plug in those settings. Um, and at the bottom, we have library dependencies. So we're going to depend on Scala test plus play, and, um, and we're going to load that in as a test dependency. You'll notice that there's not a lot of dependencies here, and that's because this play Scala plugin does a lot of default dependencies for you. There's a bunch of dependency keys and things that get added to this root project already. And so that's why the dependencies are pretty light here. Um, going through the project structure a little bit, probably the where I like to start with this is in the configuration directory, actually. So the way that play kind of works is that you, um, you in the routes file, you define the, the method, the HTTP method, and the URI. And with that pair, you define the function that gets called to serve that route. So for instance, if I load my application, if I, you know, if I do SVT run, it will run the application. And if I go to the, the host URI, which is localhost on port 9000, and I go to slash, it is going to call index on this home controller class. And that index function will return the compiled HTML and twirl to render the actual index that I want. Um, and then this down here is a sort of default setting to map static resources from this public folder. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But if you were trying to define a lot of different endpoints, then you would just continue to define additional endpoints here and you would point them all to different functions. So if I, if I had like an, another git um, to, you know, JSON endpoint and I point it to a new function in the, in the home controller, then when I go to JSON endpoint, it would go to the new function. We're just going to call index with it now, but you know, if we wanted to, we could, it could be a new function called JSON index. And it's going to give me a compile error already because there is no JSON index in that function, but we can define it later. Um, but for now, I think I'm going to go to the front and comment this out. So if I click on this index function, we can actually see what a very basic sort of controller and a very basic action sort of looks like. And there's a lot of nice comments in here to help explain what's going on. Um, again, if, if, um, if it doesn't make sense, you can go to the documentation as well or come join us on Discord. But this, is, this, this sort of explains what's going on. And the idea here is that there, we're defining as a singleton this controller and this is inject, you know, this is a hint for, for juice to say if you're going to inject anything, inject it in this parameter list. So if we expect additional things uh, to be injected, we can do that here. Um, and this is extending base controller, which is uh, a play API. So you can see this is in the play API in BC. Um, I guess one, one th important thing to note is if I expand these imports, uh, we're importing play.api dot uh, wildcard so everything under the play.api um, class path what's important to note is that this api class path is specific to scala if you are doing java the java version of this then instead of importing play.api you would just import play dot wildcard but since we're doing uh, everything in scala we're going to include play api and then this is an mvc controller and so we're going to import all the mp mvc things into this uh, as well. 
So this index function, like I said, this is what actually returns everything. So what's, what's happening here is that we're defining everything as a function. And this function is of a type of action. Actions are sort of like the building blocks for uh, serving requests in, in play. And so, um, you know, Scala is largely a functional programming language. And so you can actually use action builders to sort of compose and build more complex actions instead of having like a really long function here, you can call an outer function that might check your headers or check for security or, or you know, things like that. Um, there's also an action dot async if you want. And so if you are, um, if you are doing something that returns a Scala future, for instance, you can call action dot async and it will return this asynchronously and handle those futures for you. So you can just pass the futures up to play and it will handle it for you. Um, so what's important here though, is that this action that is being called, it provides the request for you as, um, as a partial, uh, as the left side of a partial function. So what's happening here is if I need to do something with this request, if for instance, you have a form or you have, you know, a JSON body or something like that, then this implicit request is going to be how you access it. When it actually invokes this action or, you know, it, the things actually execute, then you're going to see the request get filled. Um, each, each invocation will fill in the request with the actual request body that's happening here. So this is sort of how you get access to it. Um, this is, you know, a, a higher order function that's getting called with, with the results, with the requests. And then with the request, we're returning a result. So this OK function is essentially telling the, the, the play service that you're going to return a 200 with this. Um, if, we, if you go into OK, there's actually a bunch of different statuses. So this is this OK, OK result you say. You see it's, a, it's like an enum it's a, or a, an ADT here. But there's a lot of different um, responses you can do here. If you're wanting to do more specific things, uh, return bad requests or unauthorized or things like that, uh, all of these little helper methods help you return the different bodies that you might want. Um, but what's also really nice about that is in this home controller, uh, this, this OK method takes a parameter that um, lets you return some uh, twirl, essentially. So views.html.index actually refers to some twirl code that we have. So this is shorthand. In fact, I think I can, yeah, I can, con I can command click on index there and it will take me to this file. So this is twirl. You can kind of think of it maybe like JSP or, um, you know, the ASP or something like that. It's sort of like a programmatic markup language. Uh, and it sort of combines Scala and HTML together so that you can programmatically render the results that you want. Um, this, this, uh, you can actually include parameters into these, into these pieces. So here at the top, uh, this is, this is an index template. This is, this gets called and you can pass it in, you know, inner pieces. So we're actually invoking twirl, uh, main here with welcome to play. And if you look at, if you look at main, what it does with it is it, that that string gets passed in as a title parameter and it puts it here. So this, this at symbol is what we mean by twirl because it you know, looks like a twirl. Uh, this, this at symbol is a hint to twirl that, hey, this is something that's happening that's, that's Scala code. It's not markdown or, you know, it's not, it's not HTML. Uh, and so this, um, this title, if we were to, let's, let's do this. Let's SVT run. We're going to run the application and you can see that parameter actually get passed in. So SVT run is running the play service in developer mode, which does hot reloading for us. So I can change something in the code and it will, it will go through and, and change. So uh, here what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, this, uh, here's where I'm rendering the title. And when I actually go here and load the page, you can see that the title is welcome to play. Uh, it's taking a second the first time because it's compiling. Yeah, nice. So we loaded. We're good here. 
Now, if I were to change the title here to um, We're Live on Twitch, so I save this and I reload the page, Play will actually recompile everything behind the scenes. You can, we can see the messages over here. You can see that it's, it's, there's a reload and it, here's the st status of that reload. And you can see that the, the title of my page changed. So I changed it in the index, but that parameter got passed to main and then it got rendered in the title. Um, this also is how we are loading our assets. So we're loading style sheets, main.css, and images, favicon.png. So if we go here to public, you can see style sheets, main.css is here, and images, favicon is right here. So what's in this public folder, uh, by virtue of the, um, the, the routes rule I referred to earlier, by virtue of this, gives us access to these assets. So I have, I have access to everything that's in this public folder in my Toral code, and I can render those things in the page that I render. So here again, you know, I'm in the index.scala. This says, welcome to play, and uh, I can do the same thing. We're live on Twitch. Hi, mom. And we can reload the page again, and you can see that the message again changed. So you can, of course, build complex HTML if you want here, but largely, you know, this is how you can kind of think about how, how everything sort of happens. Um, so that's, that is the basics for the Play Framework.